Hi, Sportster Paul here with HSM Works. We're going to do some chamfers, 2D, 3D. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. Let's run right up to SolidWorks. Here's the part from episode three, you know, first third impression where the part's done. So I want to chamfer like a deeper chamfer around this outside edge. So here's all the tool paths. So I added chamfer top. You can just barely see that's here. And that is, edit, it's, it's just a, a contour here. Let's, let's get out of it. Let's do it uh, here. New operation, 2D milling. It's a 2D contour. Straightforward, you know, you make sure you, you got the right direction and the climb milling and all of that. And then to... There is a chamfer function. Where is it? Is this it? 2D contour. Chamfer, right here. And like, like the other ones, I love the hover help. This kind of tells you, you know, offsets to get to the tip of the tool. At first I used one of their chamfer chamfer tools, which was pretty straightforward. But then I switched to this type of tool. You know, it's just a like a countersink, really. And it doesn't complain. It seems to understand what's going on. Uh, the The problem here is the chamfer tool that they had. Uh, it was a bigger diameter, half inch, and it would put gouges in when I tried to do this bottom one. It would gouge it. Whereas a quarter inch tool, or even an eighth inch, it's going to let us get into this corner here when we do this lower one. So we can cancel out of this. I can show you chamfer bottom. Now, solid cam had multiple level 2D operations. So you could do these in one operation, enabling the multi-level function. So this is straightforward, same kind of stuff, makes your right direction, right whatever. But you want to pull the geometry back from this corner. Now with solid cam has this point to point that I love so much. You just go click here and from that point, it'll connect the line to the corner. The way you do it in HSM works in the geometry here. You can see right here, if you hover over it, oh, I'm sorry, it's off your screen, but it says tangential extension distance. So I learned by fiddling around and back and forth and simulator, stock simulation, back and forth, back and forth. And it depends on the size of the tool and how deep you run that tool, right? The more towards the tip, the closer you can get it to this corner. And we did this in the other cam programs. So 0.22 worked out darn close, right? So that so that pulls back the uh, the, the geometry here, and and because we didn't separate them from beginning and end, because we want to pull it back the same 22 here as we do here. See here, so you're left, so it's climb milling, all of that normal stuff. I think it's the same feed. Kind of tell it where it's at. That's no big deal. And then there it is, the chamfer stuff, where we're doing a ten, a ten thousandths, not a tenth, but ten thousandths. And we can cancel out of that and you can see it. Now, the next trick to do a 3D chamfer. There is no such thing. You do a two and a half D or a 2D trace. So that's here, a new operation, 2D milling, right here, trace. Trace will follow a 3D contour. Why it's up in 2D, I don't know. You find a lot of stuff on the internet for this, but what they do is they'll trace all the way around it. And the problem you get there, like we had in the other cam programs, when that cone-shaped tool runs down this slope and this slope, it fattens out the chamfer. And you can kind of imagine a cone and an edge, the, the shallower cut here and then as you angle that edge as you start coming down it fattens it out so this is what we did in the other ones 3d chamfer edit if you remember this is tray there is no such thing as 3d chamfer that was my rename this is the trace which i guess shows feature manager i don't know how to show trace just pick the two edges make sure the directions you know reverse them if you have to so it's the little arrows outside and you're climb milling and life is good that way. Heights, uh, I think I just, since it's tracing, it doesn't need as much information for beginning to end. Then here, 
the trick. Oh, it has a chamfer function on trace, which is pretty darn cool. And playing around three thousandths, right? So these are nominally ten thousandths by narrowing this down. And then also here, very close to the tip of the tool, only ten thousandths from the tip of the tool so that the fatter part portion doesn't run into this slope, right? And so that gets that figured out. I'm rushing here. Scallop. Now, this is a whole different way to do it. And you can see I can't get it to work unless I put in the actual, unless I model the chamfer. We're going to do that. But for now, let's suppress this. Uh, yeah, suppress it. Meanwhile, we'll go up here. We'll do our stock simulation. We'll simulate it to the end. This pops up. I had it dragged off the screen on earlier episodes. And this is stock removal. Great. Take that off of my other monitor. Down here, way at the bottom, it'll say machining time. Top setup with this chamfer, 20 minutes and 9 seconds. And then you can see, you know, it's doing its thing. The widths are about right because we pulled back on this sloped one, doing the trace, 2D trace. And then here's where it falls apart a little. If you get a little closer, it'll, you know, if you get this bottom chamfer a little closer, it'll start gouging. So there's some playing around, still learning, right? But it's capable enough, okay? So what else do I want to go over? That's straightforward stuff, okay? Now let me show you how I wasted a couple hours suffering with software. Let's unsuppress. Is the suppression is really complicated. They don't say suppress and unsuppress. It's the checkbox. They've changed paradigms from the way SolidWorks works. So you just click on it again, and now it's unsuppressed. And now we want to suppress these. Oh, first, let's save it. File, save as, save as a copy, save it as a model chamfer. It's going to overwrite the one that I've been playing with. Think, think, think. Close the original document. It probably won't obey that because the original document had its own things going on. Uh, now close the original document. Don't save it because we started it with it saved. All right. So here we are in the part called the Dave Ruiz test part, HSM works, model chamfer. We're going to model a chamfer. Now note, uh, the tool paths are all there. See them? All healthy, all happy, no red. We do want to take off the, these, these style of chamfer where we did, you know, just 2D contours and this trace business. So let's, let's just delete them. I, are you sure you want to delete them? Yeah. And then here's this scallop and say generate toolpath, generating. Okay. And notice without an actual chamfered surface to constrain this thing, it's just you, you pick the geometry. Does it show geometry simply? I guess not. Let's do it this way. How are we doing? Oh, we'll have plenty of time. In other words, I just picked this outside boundary, right? Where's geometries? These edges, you know, did the edges that I want the tool to follow. I couldn't figure out a way. There may be a way to just like, no, I just wanted to touch the geometry from the outside. I played and played. So I couldn't fix it that way. But then there's stuff. And you can see by the way I've renamed it. I'm calling it scallop now, right? So let's bomb out of this. Let's go put that model dead gen, right? And this is where things blew up and cost me an hour. So it's pretty straightforward. We're, we're in SolidWorks now, right? Insert a feature, a chamfer. Items to chamfer. I got to slow down because every time I rush, I pick the wrong things. I'm asking for a full preview because we don't have 386 computers anymore, and this is pretty basic. Come on. There. So there it is. And I'm making it fatter, right? This is a, So let's say this isn't a deburring like the 5,000s or whatever, 10,000s we were trying out. Now it's 20,000s, a little bit thicker, right? I think that's it. Say yes. And there it is, right? Chamfer's there. Now, this is what took hours. All the tool paths, top and bottom setup, are now invalid. And if you say, oh, okay, well, that can happen, Bobcad, whatever, generate tool path, doesn't fix it. Create new tool path, doesn't fix it. That should have tipped me off. What's gone wrong, 
Certainly in the bottom setup, I poofed to part zero because that was on the corner. How was it going to be in the vise? I should have shown you before we went in this, but part zero for this setup. See, now it's in the middle because I had it on a point that was in this corner that we've chamfered off. So it's smart enough to say, well, that point doesn't exist anymore, so I'm going to go back to the center, right? It will regenerate the, the drilling for some reason. Generate toolpath. Generate toolpath. It's showing you the old one, but see, the, the red disappeared. The red arrow's here. You try to regenerate this one. Where are we? Generate toolpath. Doesn't fix it. That's because you got to go here, edit the setup, say yes. And because it poofed, I'll, I'll try to put the... Let's see, I'm still not comfortable with this origin. Let, let's try to put it like down here, close to where it was. And this will make the part wrong, but that's life, right? Okay, that's all we did is identify, say yes. What's it done? It's invalid. Oh, of course, because we moved it. So that's all okay. But now let's highlight them all. Right click, generate toolpath. Now they all see, they all appear. What's more, now, this one I understand. I, I chamfered off where the part zero was. That I understand. Why it did it to this one? Because there it's set to the stock, right? Had nothing to do with adding that chamfer. So this kind of annoys me that it cost me an hour of my life trying to figure out. And it wasn't, I didn't even start, I didn't even notice that they were all red. I just tried to do this scallop method that you see on the internet that wouldn't generate, wouldn't generate. Well, it can't generate because it doesn't think it has a part zero. It doesn't think it has a coordinate system. For this one, all you got to do is edit. It gives you this warning. Oh, it's invalid, blah, blah, blah. And then quit. Then light them all up and say generate toolpath. And it fixes them all back to where they were. Kind of silly. At least it didn't poof them for good, right? Now, scallop. This was the tool path. Let me get it bigger, sorry. You know, this is where I couldn't constrain it. So with this scallop method, which you find, I'm going to leave it titled scallop. Let's edit it. Operation, see this thing too. And this makes sense because I did erase those edges. So that's valid. Okay. Let's see. Oh, okay. First, do we have the right tool? Yeah, I used an eighth inch ball. I do have an eighth inch collar. Figure that way it'll get closer into these corners, less gouging. Right click, clear the selections. And then now I want to go slow again because I always click. They do edges in, in some of these YouTube tutorials. You can pick the face and it's perfectly happy with the face. I'm a little more comfortable, right? That's what you're trying to do. But you could also tediously select both edges. I think I got it working once like that, that way. I think you can see what's going on, right? If, if you hover over an edge, it's hard. You hover over that edge, it's hard. You hover on the face and it's a thinner line that goes for the whole face. So that's it, right? And there's all kinds of stuff on the internet. This the, yeah. tool center on boundary, I think works. Contact point, I think they say to set. It's not happy, let's say, stock top to stock bottom, right? Because the geometry, this is a 3D operation, stock bottom. This is 3D scallop. So it's just make it happy, right? Because it's, it's not going to machine all the outside. It's only going to try to machine that surface. Here, we'll leave it accurate. Is this step over? Yeah, it's too big, way too big a step over to do this. So what, point oh. Two? Let's try that. Tiny little scallops. I should do stuff here about climbing, but let's just generate and see if we get something here. Yeah, we did. You got to love how, see how the tool pulls up here to make this sharp corner correct? That's kind of neat. So it's a, it's a thicker than the 10,000th one. Let's uh, right click, stock simulation. Go to end. There it is. It's not too bad, right? You can see it, it's not a, it can't get any sharper than that ball mill in the corner here. So, 
quick and dirty. The the big lesson here was when it when it decides that your setups are no good, you'll spend an hour trying to get first. You'll try to get this toolpath to appear, and it won't, no matter what you do, and change things a thousand times because you didn't notice everything else turned red. Then you're like, oh, look, all the toolpaths are invalid, and when you can't regenerate them, then you realize it's like there's some systemic problem, and then new, you know, another hour of messing around till you realize it all makes sense once you figured it out like everything that's why the programmers think we're all stupid okay so we're out of this what shall we do let's edit let's see if we can go find where i put that what's this heights it's not going to be here it's going to be here these are step overs oh no it, it's duh it's it's generated here come on here and let's make it ten thousandths like before i spent so much time fiddling with this so now it's that same small one go here notice everything's invalidated now let's see if these will regenerate oh okay now it's happier Let's go here and regenerate toolpath. It didn't bomb out like before. Here's here. Let's, well, just to be thorough, let's regenerate all these. This one might, yeah, this one should not generate. Yeah, see, it's face generated. Yeah, it did. Now, isn't that interesting? I guess that point in space, where's our bottom set up? But that point in space, I guess it was defined as the corner of that face or that edge. So when I made it a smaller chamfer, it moved and it didn't invalidate it. Maybe that was the whole thing. Maybe it wouldn't have invalidated this top one if the bottom setup didn't get poofed. Little buggy, not the end of the world. So let's go back up here. Oh, we got plenty of time. It'll be a quick episode. And do machine stock simulate. Go to the end. Bang. It, it is showing this this thing here, right? With all of, it's just showing up off screen. And now it's doing a pretty good job. So scallop to the rescue. It does this corner pretty good. Let's use that compare. I, I still like the, the solid cam compare better. Same as visual uh, visual mill compare. Let's compare. You think you'd see, let's do a finer compare, 20 levels of a thousandth each. You think you'd see more color change and problems here. I guess that's what this band and this band is trying to show us. And you can see actually the little bit of scalloping. That's pretty impressive, right? So, cool. There wasn't much of a scallop. Let's go edit. And here it tells you, right? The scallop is seven micro inches, 10 to the minus six. So not bad. And by you can obviously as you just step over is how many passes you want to take, you know, how close the ball mill. You could probably constrain it down to one and have instead of a flat chamfer, just have a little cup of whatever size ball mill. Smaller the better if you want to get in this corner. So let us. And like this, okay, that's chamfers. Chamfering was easy. Understanding how it invalidates all the tool paths if you make the tiniest little change to your model. That took me a couple hours. Hope it saves you some time, all right? Sportster Paul, HSM Works. Catch you next time. We'll be doing undercuts or T-slots or something else we'll find. Do a couple more episodes, then we'll start making chips, all right? Catch you next time. Bye.